Kevin right to call Trump a madman? This is the discussion we're going to start with and warn that his second term will be nastier and more vengeful than his first. Now, our Kevin here has written a raging column in his paper, <laughs> The Daily Mirror. Let's take a look at that column. Here is the piece behind me. So prepare for nightmare crashes. Donald Trump will be nastier and more vengeful. That is the headline. We move to the second paragraph. And Kevin then says that Trump is a madman. A uh, madman branded a fascist by those who work for him. He says that there will be an assault on decency and public services from the convicted felon. And also adds there that Vladimir Putin is doing fist pumps in the Kremlin. Kevin then goes on to say that NATO will be trashed and Trump's return will be an absolute nightmare for the prime minister. Now, Kevin, I'll come to you in a moment. But just your reaction on that, to that, Lynn? Well, I think we should stop criticising him in terms of how we believe him to be, because clearly the American people have given him a huge whopping mandate. And instead of this idea that he's a mad, raging bull, I think he screams authority, I think he screams strongman. I think the way how the world is going now, the West needs someone where other countries are slightly fearful. And well, I was just going to add, doesn't Putin come across as authoritative and a strong man? Is that necessarily the criteria that we want a president I think, to have? I think have? to a degree, yes. If, you, if you've got people in the world like Kim Jong-un and like Putin, uh, where Kim Jong-un has said, I have got ballistic missiles that can hit Chicago, you're going to have to have somebody like him where, to be honest with you, Kim Jong-un only wanted to meet Trump and had a level of respect for him. And I would much rather we work from a place of mutual respect, even if it is in the middle of madness, that Putin and Kim Jong-un look at him and say, do you know what? I have a level of respect and I don't want to mess around with him. Whereas they don't respect Biden. They don't respect many entities within Europe because Europe seems to be driven by this identity politics. They don't seem to have authority. They don't seem to be business minded. We've had limited growth. So are you coming from the perspective that this is like for like? Because there's a mad dog theory that we discuss all the time on yep. this show where if you are trying to deal with, with characters like Putin, you need a similar character in power? Or do you actually think Trump holds other characteristics that differentiates him from well, Vladimir I, Putin? Well, I think I take some of your point in terms of madness for the simple fact that Trump is unpredictable. And I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. I think if other countries can see, we don't know actually what he may do mm. because he's not your conventional leader. We may need to get our ducks in a row and kind of behave ourselves. And that's what the American people want. Mm. They want someone also, uh, aside from geopolitics, they want someone that speaks to them, that represents them, whether it's your farmers, whether it's your um, mother, single mother going to work and seeing how expensive groceries are. He said, you know, you're messing with our children when it comes to puberty blockers. I'm going to put a stop to that. This is the average uh, mindset of the American and he speaks to them. Just going to the unpredictability factor of Donald Trump, yeah. normally when it comes to the economy, Kevin, unpredictability is a disaster. But when it comes to Trump, it doesn't seem to have had the same effect. No, I mean, it's an incredible uh, political comeback. I don't deny it. It'd be from the 45th <laughs> to the 47th president to come back like, mm. uh, like that. A lot of it is the Democrats, Joe Biden, couldn't, couldn't communicate. People felt worse, uh, worse off. Uh, it's a warning for Keir Starmer, Rachel Reeves, mm. Labour in 2029 here. But my big fear of him is he doesn't respect institutions and justice and fairness. And in the world order, he's mm. one of them, not one of us. He likes to praise Putin, who is doing fist bumps now. In fact, he's, he's welcomed him he very has. warmly. Kim Jong-un got all the credit for the summit because he could show the North Korean people he oppresses mm. that he's a player on the world stage. Mm. The well, US I don't, I don't, got nothing out of it. I don't think he he's, he's praising them. He's, he's, what he's, he's an enemy of democracies and is a friend of 
dictators. I, and I don't know if I tyrants. agree with that. I don't think I've never heard him actually praise. I say, you know, we underestimate that Putin is an intelligent man. We underestimate, you know, the Chinese people. If they if they want um, that sort of leader, that's up to them. What I absolutely love is this sort of anti-globalist oh, rhetoric oh. of why are we meddling in other people's affairs so much? Let's concentrate on our own people. And as for NATO, why should America have to subsidise the rest of the countries when it comes to NATO? He's saying, you know what? To the average American, your taxes shouldn't have to go on propping up other countries in the world. Do you think you should say to Putin, you can effectively invade a NATO uh, member and we'll do nothing? But let's if look at the Minsk agreement. Let's, I, I would urge everybody... I mean, that's, that is I would it. urge, that I'd is urge everybody to really... Uh, research what the is reason? happening in Russia and Ukraine with the Minsk agreement. Biden mm -hmm. did not listen, neither did the European countries, so. and Russia time and time again warned um, European countries and America, stop encroaching on my border. Now, when it comes to America and Cuba, any other country would not accept yeah. a country encroaching on its border, yeah. but Russia has to Min accept Min it. The Minsk agreement was Ukraine giving up nuclear weapons, and in return, Russia gave uh, an undertaking, a legal undertaking it wouldn't invade. It has. Now, the, and how did they if treat you're, the Russian if you're, people? If you're, if, you're, if, you're, if you're Zelensky in Ukraine, you're terrified at the election of, mm. of Trump. If, so you're, you if, you're, if you're Putin in Moscow, you're thrilled. That tells you everything why you know. Why should because we it's, be, it's an why issue we, you have to pick a but side But why should we be funding I'll go with Ukraine, the Ukraine war? I'll go with invaded well, Ukraine against the invaded Russia. Why are we Russia? funding Ukraine, to, Ukraine I, war? I, I, you, the Ukraine uh, issue will come up time and time again <laughs> in this discussion, I'm sure, but I just don't want to get stuck in it and we're getting loads of calls coming through, so I'd love to speak to some of you at home. Cathy from Cheshire, what's your view? Do you think that Trump will be more vengeful this time? Well, I'd like to bring up the point it, it said, is he a madman? Uh, I think the bias shown by TV media and show business celebrities portraying him as some sort of pantomime or comic book villain like a Lex Luthor or Ming the Unmerciful is utter nonsense. It's on subtle propaganda. And it was the same when his opposition was Hillary Clinton. Someone said to me, uh, they came on and they said so many nice things about Hillary and then terrible things about Donald Trump. And it's the same with Kamala. I feel sorry for Kamala. Um, it's not her fault, all this, but from the other side, the bias is shameful. Well, it, it's appalling. Do, do, would you not agree that Trump is quite prone to saying some un controversial things and, and some very unusual things? He was going on about people eating dogs in a debate. Um, he's made some really controversial statements about people crossing the border in Mexico. There have been a few moments where you sit back and think, well, that... That isn't what we were expecting from a president. Well, the point I'd like to make as well, that man has been a president before. Absolutely. And the, the whole world didn't disintegrate. He held the presidency quite successfully. There wasn't a big problem, was there? Okay. You, it's utter nonsense, this, the way uh, people are speaking about him. Uh, Cathy, I, I think you... If rose coloured uh, spectacles, I think you're looking back. I'll agree with you that celebrity endorsements... Um, which mainly went, you know, from Hollywood and music, uh, you know, Taylor Swift and everybody to uh, Kamala Harris. They get you nowhere. Um, <laughs> but I would have thought the you... attempted coup at the end of Trump's reign when he didn't want to give up power and he incited the people to storm the Capitol on the 6th of uh, January uh, 2021 should... Uh, be, maybe setting alarm bells ringing in yeah, your head. Yeah, but we didn't have any war, though. Him. So I do understand where she's coming from. You know, it, it, during his tenure, we didn't have any uh, geopolitical instability. We didn't have any war. And he's time and time again said, and I'd like to see what happens, he's going to ensure he tries to bring a close to these wars. OK. Cathy, thank you very much for your call. But just going back to Cathy's point, when you say a madman, what what other evidence are you pointing to there when you're referring yeah, to a madness? Mad? Well, well, I, mad? I, I think mad is when you're totally unpredictable and you create problems for your allies and your country. And I think the coup was the apex of that, the attempted coup, okay. when he lost fairly and squarely. He won, he won fairly and squarely this time. If those results had been reversed and it was Harris... Who'd, who'd won, he'd be challenging it and denying it and saying the election was rigged. He claimed before the election it was rigged. He wins, 
he forgets that. Okay, you're not just talking about the unusual comments he makes, like well, look, he was the Queen's favourite president, for example. Well, just sort of flippant comments that he. Why can't, there, why can't he say no, things but there like that? Well, 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 I mean, he I lied think, and he lied and he lied. He lied more think, than Boris Johnson. I think in Britain we don't like that. We see it as distasteful and dishonest. But his, uh, but his sort of energy is what the Americans love. Mm. You know that um, alpha male confidence. There's, there's a group who does that. I think others have voted for him despite him being him because they think you make them better off which they're entitled to reach well, their, wait and they're see. entitled to reach their view yeah you may not make them better off taxes you, was lower you, under you, him you make billionaires richer back to the calls now lisa from devon what's your thoughts yeah kevin is very accurate he is he's bonkers <laughs> when you say bonkers though what, what there's lots of things that the, the ways that people describe trump and there isn't the, without referring to evidence. So where is your evidence for him being bonkers? Well, he's just, he's a liar. Okay. Um, he tells lies and he just likes the controversy of it all, it's drama. He, he does know? seem to he's thrive in chaos. Um, but in, in, a, in, a, in the, a global environment, maybe that's beneficial. In the current global environment. Uh, well, not when it comes to Trump. I mean, Kevin is articulate. He's honestly smart. People won't like that. Yeah, but wouldn't no? you? Wouldn't you say? Wouldn't you say? Because oftentimes people, uh, even with myself, will say, "Oh, you're controversial for no reason. You just like to be different." No. How about I research and I say things which I believe in, and I'm not afraid to say it publicly. And what we tend to do when someone veers from, you know, the the track that we, we think people should go in. We call them weird, we call them bonkers. When you look at all of the leaders in history that really made a name for themselves, they went against the grain a bit. So do you just think that maybe it's because he's he's doing something a bit different and this is what the Americans want? They want refreshing. They don't want the typical what yeah. we've seen over and over again with people like Biden and Clinton. But and... Yeah, but yeah, you, can have, uh, you can have people making history and going against the grain, but they're, they're making the wrong history and, go, well, we don't and know going that. against the grain. Well, we... the, there are too many examples exactly. of that. And I don't want to mention Germany in the it 1930s, is, it, but it's the prime one. It is interesting that you mention you do your research and you come up with a, a theory that might be different to some other people. There, there are examples of when Trump has clearly not done his research. I mean, when it came to COVID, he made some, quite frankly, dangerous comments when he talked about injecting bleach and light being uh, used to defeat the... Disinfectant. Yeah. Disinfectant. Yeah. So he, yes, I mean, course. that's That is very irresponsible. I'm, I'm not going to defend him for everything, but then if we're going to talk about liar, liar, and we're going to talk about, you know, things that we had no awareness of with COVID. We need to look at the majority of the politicians. He, because, again, Boris yeah. lied. He was, he was shaking everyone's hand at the hospital before he, yeah, he but, fell but, in. But, but, but COVID, but show me a truthful COVID's, politician. But COVID's a good example of what Lisa's referring to. He, mm. he was jabbed, but then he was encouraging the, the anti-jab, the anti-vaxxer movement. He's, he's got a Kennedy... Uh, Weirwood member of that family who Robert Kennedy yeah, is a potential make help make America healthier again. There's no way he'll make healthier again if he's against inoculations. Lisa, thank you very much for your call. Sue from Somerset, what's your view on Trump? Is it going to be more vengeful, more nasty this time around? Was it the first time around? No, I, I, I don't think he was. He he, he um he's very bold and he speaks uh, 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 shoots from the hip. I suppose you'd say, yeah. and I like that in a person. Mm. I don't. I don't. I think it's the quiet ones you, um, you've got to watch. Because, well, that's, well I, mean, what, what, I mean, look what's happened in this country. You know, they've all they've all done it. All the politicians and the quiet ones. They're the sneaky ones. They're the ones who come out the woodwork. They don't say anything because they don't want to tell you what they're going to do. And they're actually more dangerous to well, me. Well, let's talk about the shooting from the hip and some of the comments he's made. I mean, let's just talk about some of the ways he's referred to women and his treatment of women. Are, is that, are we comfortable with that in a president? Well, I don't suppose so. And we all say stupid things. I mean, uh, look at um, David Lammy. We don't you all know, say and now that. He's trying to back rap. But, you know, people do. People say things. And, but, do, and but, but do presidents say those sorts of things? Is it a presidential candidate who says something like that? If it was the show was on the other foot, and it was Kamala Harris who had came out with with similar comments and similar treatment of men. Do you think it would have been viewed in the same way? 
Well, all this stuff, uh, come on, we've all got to grow up. We're all adults. What are we, seven years old? You know, she said this, he did that. Sue is not, I mean, Sue is not just saying it, though, is it? I mean, he, he, had, he had to pay out because he lost a court case against a woman who said she was uh, sexually assaulted by him. I mean, yeah, saying some things, grabbing women by, as he, as he said it, you know, the, the place he said it, or saying he could fancy his daughter if she wasn't his daughter, which, you know, I find weird and stomach churning. Yeah, but, but it's not, it's not just what he's said, it's what he's done. And actions count for more than words, I agree, but you're, you're I, just sweeping yeah, them away. I, I, yeah, I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to um, uh, say that, you know, what he's done is, is, is um, you know, great. But I do think with, with some things... Particularly, you know, it's like in, in this country, it's the same in America, it's the same in every country. Mm. You want a president, you want somebody in government that's going to do the things that need doing. And you're not going to please everybody over it. Okay. Um, and, and I think, you know, you, you've just got to, you can't sit there saying he might do this, he might do that. He might be, nobody knows. Well, no, yeah. and, and, and only time will tell now. Uh, so thank you for your call. Julie from Manchester, what's your thoughts? Um, well, I'm scared. I'm scared that he's got in power. Um, I live in England and I don't know what they're thinking in America, but I, I'm scared of what he might do. What are you scared um, about? I'm scared because he's, well, he's a bit, he is a madman. And a madman doesn't doesn't um, rationalise things or, you know, he, he's manipulative. He's... Um, He's sly um, and he lies. He's a criminal. He's not trustworthy. Um, but, but, he's just but, a bit but of a that could be said really. for many, many politicians. What are you worried about? What, what do you think? What is happen? your extreme yeah. fear when you say that you're scared? That's quite a, a big emotion. What are you scared about? What's the worst thing that could happen? Um, I'm worried about his relationship with Putin. Okay. And then when you see what Putin's done, mm -hmm. um, I just think he's, he's that Trump seems the type of person that would press a button, would destroy. Okay. I don't think he's, so I don't his, think he, um, he it, manipulates people. Impredictability, it's unpredictability rather, that you're particularly concerned about just very quickly I only have a minute Kevin but in your article you talk about him being more vengeful what are you thinking about when you say he's going to be nastier and more vengeful what's giving you that indication because he you'll have the experience of the first term how you you never expected to win then so he just got like his mates in who was all a bit of a laugh got a few mm -hmm. stars around <laughs> now he's, he's in with a very hard right-wing ideological group and okay. he will personally want to settle scores. Do so you think he's also more organised? Yes, the, the people around him, certainly. All right, Julie, thank you very much for your call. Thanks for all your calls on that. We are